Alright then, part two. Uh, so you should have this so far. If you haven't done that, go back and do all of this. Uh, I'm just going to change the colour of this now to make it a bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now, you've got the paint pot tool here, which is really handy. You can choose that, you can pick whatever colour you like, and you can click on it. Now obviously if things are grouped, uh, they will all take on that colour. Uh, now, pink isn't really my scene, so I'm going to go with a kind of, I don't know, a dark gold orange colour, because that looks a bit like the wood we're going to be using. But um, do whatever you think looks classy and good. So you can paint your object. I'm now going to relocate my axes, these blue, green and red drawing guides, I'm going to put them on the corner of my work, just so everything's a bit better lined up. So this tool here is very handy, called Axis. You see you get saying, here's my new axis. Now, I want the corner, and then it's asking you which way do you want to be red, so I want it along that edge, which way to be green, that way maybe, there we go. It doesn't actually matter which colour goes which way, because as long as you've just got it all coming off of the corner. Alright, let's just put our work back in the middle, which is going to be useful a bit later on. So, Anyway, right, we're going to uh, do one of the hardest bits now, which is make the dome. Um, the dome is a bit of a pain in the backside to make, okay? So I'm just going to uh, pause the video while I practice it myself and then come back and show you. Right, um, yeah, I've practiced it. So do uh, do follow this method exactly, okay? Um, very, very closely because it's very easy to get it wrong. So go and get your line tool and draw a line from one corner to the other, like so. And then go get your circle tool. And if you just move along the line you've drawn until you get the blue blob for the center and draw a circle and it needs to be 30 radius. So hit 30 on your keyboard and hit enter. Um, now hopefully if you made this object below all the group, you, you'll only be selecting the circle you've drawn. I know it seems to be confused with the other part, but it actually isn't. So just drag up reasonably high both parts of this. doesn't actually matter how high. Like so. Uh, go and get your line tool. Find the centre of the work. And now what you're trying to do is just draw a blue line up. Again, doesn't matter how high. Just about that sort of size. Get your circle tool. And now you're going to draw a circle on here. Now this is the bit that you've got to get right. You've got to see there the circle's blue. Adjust your view like this until the circle goes red. So you're drawing your circle uh, at 90 degrees to the other. You're going to think I'm going mad here, okay? And this one needs to be 30, so hit 30. And find the center of this again and draw another circle and hit 27, because this circle's got a thickness. Get your line tool and try and find the midpoint which would be there and draw a line across and now we've got to tactfully delete all the lines we don't need so I want you to get rid of everything that I am so get rid of that, 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 the whole center that, 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 that line on top this here, get rid of the sides get rid of um, the construction lines underneath I know this seems like a weird, weird way of doing it but what you're looking for is an arch like that suspended above a flat disc and they've got to be exactly at 90 degrees right if you've done it exactly as I said this should work here's hoping so you're going to get this clever tool now called follow me and what this does is it will take a shape and follow it around another line so I'm going to take this pattern and follow it around that circle outline there and that's what's going to make our dome so Sometimes it goes a bit wrong. If it does, just do edit undo. So click that, and then move down to the line, and then rotate around. Okay. Um, there we go. Right, that went wrong. So <laughs> you'll get a feel for it. It sometimes it just it gets a bit confused. Right, I find when it when it looks like that. Okay, when the dome goes all hexagonal. I know it's a bit odd to explain, that's a perfect dome, but basically keep doing it and keep tracing out the outline until you get a perfect half sphere. Okay. Right, now what you do is get your arrow tool. You don't need that disc anymore, or that line that was just there for construction. Drag a box around that, right click and make it a component, so this will be dome. And we want to make this transparent, so you're going to get the uh, paint bucket tool from your categories, choose translucent and pick what you like, but I quite like this translucent glass blue. Okay, there we go. Alright, so that's the dome. 
um, you now want to move that straight down so look at it sideways on get your move tool and then you know if you pick end point and just move straight down onto there there we go and just line your dome up okay hopefully it'll go as easily as mine did good idea to make that a, uh, a group now okay um, in fact actually I'm just gonna just gonna leave it as it is for now right um, anyway that's the whole box save your work it gets a little bit easier from now on because now we're just gonna go and nick models off the internet uh, so you haven't got to make the LEDs from scratch you're gonna import them and this is a really cool feature of SketchUp. There are loads of people out there who do this for a hobby and they've built models of everything. Um, if you've ever been on Google Earth and you've looked at some of the cities and you know when you zoom in on the cities the buildings are 3D, um, those 3D models are made in SketchUp by enthusiasts. So people have gone on and kind of modelled their own house or apartment block and then uploaded it to Google Earth. It's quite cool. But there are also people that have modelled other random stuff like a battery or an LED to save you having to build it. Obviously no one's modelled a night light box yet um, and I'm not about to go and put the plans on Google just so you can nick them because you know that'd be too easy. So <laughs> if you go up here to your toolbar you should have one called get models. It may have a slightly different icon on your version just make sure it says get models. Click that. That'll take you to the website. Um, you can type in whatever you want. That So if I did Ferrari for instance uh, you'll it's sometimes a bit slow Right, you'll find, there you go, people have modelled entire cars, look, so just the bank of Ferraris there, and you thought this was complicated in SketchUp, try making something like that. Anyway, we want an LED, so type in 5mm LED. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful, um, for some reason you have to click search rather than hit enter. Some of these are made, and whatever plonker made them didn't, bother making them to an actual size you just drew it to look like an LED and you import them and they're like the size of a house or the size of a flea uh, they're not right um, so you'll have to do a bit ex of experimenting I found this one called accurate 5mm red LED is good so click the download button and it says load this directly into your SketchUp model click yes okay there we go now we want three of them so just gonna do control C control V sorry edit copy it paste okay so make three of them and we're going to try and drag them into place now now that dome frustratingly is going to be in the way of doing this so I'm going to temporarily make it invisible this is another cool feature uh, I'm actually going to make um, what I'm going to do is select all of that right click and uh, explode is the opposite of making a group so if I do that now because I've made a group within a group I've now got to explode that and then explode that All right, and now I can just select my parts individually so what I recommend you do is get it to a point where you can you may have to explode it several times Look, where you can take your side panel and your dome and you can select every panel individually right you're now going to temporarily make these invisible you're not going to delete them you're going to make them invisible so select your dome right click on it and choose hide um, you may need to do that for if you didn't make it a component I thought I did so I drag a box around it right click hide that's better select this panel right click hide okay so they're both temporarily invisible now you can get them back you just go up to edit unhide all and then reappear okay so anyway, I'm going to make them invisible again. That's just going to help me with lining up these LEDs in their sockets and putting the battery in. And then when the model's finished, I'll, I'll make them visible again. Okay. Right. Maybe make all that a group again. So it's not in any danger of coming apart while you move your LEDs. And then you're just really going to use the move tool, okay? So try and move them to an approximate location. Don't ask me where that LED just went. Oh, make sure you don't rotate them either. Okay. And remember, adjust your view while you're doing this. So sort of put them in the right ballpark. Okay. 
Okay, and then it's a case of going, right, well, I need to look at it from the side. I know that that little lip there should line up with the bottom of this. Okay, that one's looking good. This LED is too high, so I'm going to pull it down a bit, look at it from the side, drag it down. Remember, use your little purple markers. It is a little bit fiddly and frustrating, but you will get there eventually, okay? I'm not too fussed about how accurate this is. Just do your best and... Oh. Yeah, it does weird things like that. So if, it, if it's not going how you want it, adjust your view and then give it another go, okay? So that's looking pretty good from the side. There's a little bit of a mismatch from the top, so I'm just going to pull the... Oh, hello. Okay, pull that one in. You'll find Google will kind of, the closer you get, SketchUp will go, ah, oh, I get it now, and it will just kind of snap into place. All right? Unfortunately, I haven't found an easier way of doing that, but stick your LEDs in. If you want to be fancy, you could change the color of them and make them white if you want, because they're the type of LEDs we're using. Um, and now I'm going to go get some more models now. I'm going to get a battery, so get models. Um, I found, if you type 9 volt, battery again it's a bit hit or miss to click search some of them are rubbish some of them are good um, one that I found that worked I mean we could try this Varta one let's have a look you've just got to suck it and see sometimes so there you go load it in right this one is minuscule so that was a bad one right try again Unfortunately, because these are free to upload, there's no one kind of policing what's good and bad, so... Um, okay, I don't know, should we try this one? There we go, that one looks the right size. Brilliant. So, you know, use that one yourself. Right, now the battery has to go sideways in this product, so I'm going to rotate it. So there we go, click, rotate 90 degrees, and now I can move it. So I'm going to move it in. Again, use your little purple marks so that purple lines up on the face. And maybe look at it underneath now to do this bit. That's going to line up to the back. Okay, and then you decide how you position it. So maybe you'd put it up higher. It's up to you. The whole point of doing 3D modeling is you, you can sort of plan your layout and stuff, you know, and make it when you get on to designing your own boxes in the future you'll, you'll kind of know that everything's going to fit okay and we can check that yes there's room for the LEDs and a battery and your circuit board alright now obviously there won't be any pre-made model of your circuit board so you're going to have to just go and get a generic one and then kind of shrink it to the size so I'm going to go get models I'm going to type uh, circuit board Alright, find one that just looks sort of similar. I'm, I'm not too fussed really. That one's always a safe bet. So load that into your model. Now you may find out it's a bit big, like this. Okay, that's a bit larger than I wanted. Doesn't matter, you can scale them with another tool. So import your model, let's have a look at it. Yeah, it's got some components, not the same as ours, but it'll do for illustration. And you're going to use this tool, scale tool. So that brings up a bit like say sizing a picture in Word, you drag the corner boxes look and you can just make it bigger or smaller, which is very handy. So I'm going to make it, I don't know, you, you only you know roughly how big your circuit board is because you all designed your own, they're all different sizes. I'm going to make it what I think looks right and I'm just going to move that into my model. Um, just because I'm fussy I'm going to rotate it so I can see all the detail when I look at it from underneath. So do a 180. Okay, maybe I scaled it down a bit too much, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and then just maneuver it into place. Okay, there we go. Right, now that's all I'm really looking for. You could get really technical if you want. You could put a battery clip on this and run the wires to there. Uh, I'd like you, if you can, go and find a model of an LDR, light dependent resistor. If you don't know what they look like, I'm not going to put it in for you, you can do that. But just type in LDR, let's see what it finds. Um, nope, there, cars. <laughs> Light depend dependent resistor, maybe. There we go. Um, that one there, whether it's the right size or not. No, look, it's huge. 
Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You can scale it down, and then that LDR, when you get onto it, that fits in that corner hole over there. Okay. I'm not going to build that. I'm just going to assume you'll do that and add it into your model. All you're going to do now is prove you made it um, by taking some screenshots. So customize the colors if you want to. Um, but what I want you to do is grab some screenshots from different angles with the panels removed and with the panels on to show me the whole finished thing. So here would be a good screenshot. So I'm going to... I wonder if I can do that. Let me just try something. Edit, copy. I'm not sure if this will work. So uh, if it doesn't, just ignore this part of the video. And... Control. No, that didn't work. <laughs> All right. Um, perhaps the best way is just to do a uh, print screen on your keyboard. So print screen, go into your PowerPoint, paste your picture in, crop it. I want this to look pretty. Double click on it, go to corrections, oh sorry, color, set transparent color and click on the gray background so it goes white. Alright, so there's one view. What I'm expecting is a whole bunch of pictures just illustrating what you made. You could go in, you could maybe get a picture uh, with the panels back on now. So if you go, if you need that, go edit, unhide, all. Alright, so we've got all our panels back on. So maybe you get a sideways picture like that. You know, print screen, build it in, paste it, crop it. So I'm just double clicking to do that. Hopefully this is basic IT skills, you should know how to do this. There we go. Alright, maybe one with the bottom on. It's up to you, really. Okay, so maybe just manoeuvre the bottom in, put it back up where it fits, which is there. Get an underside view, just proving you did it. Um, okay. You get the idea. What I'm looking for is just a page of maybe five different shots from different angles in different viewpoints showing that you did everything you know show me the inside show me it with and without the dome and this will get you your a star grade okay stick a title on it a couple of labels and print that out in color and then hand it to me okay so that is your assignment um, if you've managed that well done i hope you remembered some of those skills do save this because it's a useful reference okay so save your work and that's the end of video too